maybe you've driven by this farm, maybe you've driven by this farm thousands of times as I have and wondered what it was and who lived there and what they did here. Well, this is Weir River Farm and it's a real working farm owned by the trustees of the reservation, 75 acres right here on Route 228 in Hingham and they have livestock and crops and they run great educational programs for children especially during February Vacation Week. So come on up with me and take a look. Here at the Weir Farm in Hingham, we're a property of the Trustees of Reservations, which is a nonprofit organization uh, here in Massachusetts. We have 105 properties across the state. And um, the Weir Farm opened to the public in 2000, and we are a working farm with five acres of vegetables. We raise uh, grass-fed beef, we raise pork, we raise lamb, we sell eggs, and we also have a number of programs for kids and families throughout the, throughout the year. So we're really the definition of a community farm. We are basically one of the last you know, big working farms here in Hingham. Hingham had a very rich agricultural um, history. Now there are town regulations and bylaws that you have to follow as far as like how much land you have and like what livestock you can have on it. Sure, so these are our, this is our flock of Icelandic sheep. Hopefully all of our ladies are pregnant. These guys right here, this is our breeding stock, so we're really excited. One other fun fact about Icelandic is that they often will twin. So even though we only have seven ewes or seven moms, um, last year we had 13 lambs born and 12 survived. They all have names? They do all have names. Yeah, this one right here is Sweet Annie. Sweet Annie. Yep. Hi. They're actually all plant names. Yep. Black Eyed Susan. Hi, Susan. Hi. And then we have um, Shamrock yes. and Rosemary. And then the mother and daughter team look very much alike. That's um, Cosmo and Lavender. Now, this one looks very pregnant. Could that be twins? Well, you know, it could be twins. But um, one of the downsides to um, being at a farm where we have a lot of kids is that our sheep are extremely well fed. They get really used to um, getting grain or just kind of being fed whenever they want. So our sheep are a little on the hefty side to begin with. Now what's with his horns? Merlin is about three years old. Yeah, he's got a really good set of horns on him and he uses them for um, protection primarily and also, um, you know, our staff have to be pretty careful this time of year when we, when we get in the pen with him because, you know, even on a good day he can feel a little fresh and give you a good old-fashioned ramming. <laughs> <laughs> That's where the word, That's came where the from, word right? comes from. Yeah. And we have the dogs. This is yes. Parker. Hello, Parker. Parker. Hi, Parker. Parker is one Come of the on newest here, members Parker. here on the farm. Come on, boy. And then there was my favorite, Tuck, the golden retriever. So over here we have our flock of buff Orpington hens. We have about 35 of these beautiful birds. Now these uh, are a strange color. They are. They, I actually call them the golden retriever of chickens because they're very friendly and they're docile. They lay a beautiful, uh, well-sized brown egg and each hen can lay one, one egg a day. And we sell these eggs right here at the farm for $5 a dozen. Uh, you'll notice that they're in um, a unique kind of coop that's on wheels and this is actually called a chicken tractor and what we do is we drive this around the farm so that the chickens are able to free range on new grass, explore new places, eat different bugs and it really actually helps because then of course the grass where the chicken tractor was is then fertilized by the chickens. These are our belted Galloway herd of cattle and we raise them here at the farm for grass-fed beef. Uh, one of the things about grass-fed beef is that we don't confine our cattle. They're out on pasture 365 days a year and of course this time of year when we don't have grass to feed them we have to provide them with hay. As you can see some of them are having some hay right now. Um, the only grain that our cattle are, is fed is leftover grains from Hingham Beer Works. Uh, we have a great partnership with them so that after they use the different grains to brew their beer, um, instead of those grains being wasted or thrown out, they actually come here and they feed our cattle and they feed our pigs. 
I asked Megan about how the kids in her programs feel about tending to the animals that will actually be eaten someday. We do talk to kids um, about where their food comes from. When I tell kids that all animals are not raised like they are here. I think that a lot of people imagine that when you're biting into a delicious hamburger that you get from the grocery store, that you're eating an animal that got to run on grass every day and play and breathe fresh air. And unfortunately, that's just not the case. Um, you know, most of the animals that we do that we do eat have it's it's a much more industrial lifestyle. You know, if I'm going to eat an animal, then I want to eat an animal that had a fantastic quality of life and that's what the animals that are here have. So as you can see um, we have one of our one of our moms over here who really doesn't feel like sharing the road with us today so even after you know I might try to try to explain to her the situation she doesn't really want to let us by but <laughs> as you can see they, you know, they are they are very uh, docile gentle animals yeah, even but, if but this looks like a standoff yeah, well, on a muddy day like today, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. So over here we have Kiwi. He is a Welsh mountain pony. He's probably about 15 to 17 years old. And as you can see, he's been rolling around the mud today, one of his favorite pastimes, especially after we've just brushed him. <laughs> this is Kiwi. Kiwi. Our pony boy. He's a good boy. He is. It is. Now you can see why kids love to be here. That's Scarlet O'Hagra. Holy cow! Yikes! She's our sow. So, so huh? she's a mama pig. I'll say. And, um, one thing you notice about Scarlet is that she is a red pig. A lot of people have never seen a red pig before. Yep. Um, their breed, the Tamar, the Tamar. They're yep. called the Irish Bacon Pig. Uh huh. And um, they're not very common these days. Most of our, most of the pork that we eat, uh, um, from the commercial say the other white meat. Yes. Well, the Tamworth actually has a little bit of a red hue. They have red hair, they have red skin, and their meat's actually a little bit red too. Well, over here we have a smaller flock of Rhode Island red hens. And a lot of people in New England um, have heard the expression brown eggs or local eggs. Um, but the Rhode Island red, they do lay a really nice quality brown egg. They are absolutely outstandingly delicious. Once you start eating farm fresh eggs, it's really hard to go back to store bought. I'm a city girl and I'm going to look for some eggs. There you go. Look at that. Nice huh? job, Kathy. Just like a pro. All right. Whoa. I don't think the chickens like this. Okay. Hey, look at this. Yum. Looks good. Sorry, girls. All right. And one of the great things to teach kids is that whether you have a pet or whether you do have an animal, like a, you know, a, a, um, if you have livestock, is that these domestic animals completely depend and rely on you. And it doesn't matter if it's freezing cold or if it's Christmas Day or if it's raining or snowing, that, you know, we still have to get up every day and put our boots on and go out there and care for them. And it's the same thing if you have a dog, you know. You can find out more about vacation programs and other information on the farm online at thetrustees.org and then click on Weir River Farm. Or call them at 781-740-7233. You can hike or even drive your way up to the top of the property at Weir River Farm, which is right here on top of Turkey Hill, and you'll get an amazing view of the harbor and the Boston skyline. So whether you send the kids for February vacation week, or do some volunteering, or just come in for a day visit, Weir River Farm is definitely worth the trip.